I think that the main takeaway from the meeting was certainly that EU agencies have proven to be very effective in adopting to COVID-19. I'm impressed by how we have quickly overcome the many challenges and even increased activities. EU agencies play a key role in improving the daily lives of Europeans and the experience of the past months have really confirmed our collective dedication to this aim. If this year has shown us one thing as we tackle home offices and private professional multitasking, it's that we all benefit from flexibility. EU agencies come in all sizes and shapes, so flexibility will be key in our way of working in the new normal and also how we address shifting priorities, whether on the output front or on the staffing front. Thanks. I found the last network meeting very inspiring, especially with the high level participation from the EU institution, including also the presentation by the UN. Going forward, um, to make the director's meetings more impactful, I believe we should focus on three topics. How to take forward the policy cooperation between groups of agencies. Secondly, how to go further with shared services, shared functions among the agencies. And thirdly, to reform our governance to remain effective and efficient in taking decisions and implementing them. I think our discussion has shown that uh, we agencies have a lot to share in terms of representing our interest uh, to institutions in Brussels. And looking forward ahead, I think uh, we need to concentrate not just on cooperation across policy sectors, but also cooperation on types of services that we render to the Commission and institutions and develop our representation on this typology of services. I appreciated the new approach of the internal audit service, which will now audit both the agency and the DG partner involved in the same policy. This new audit method highlights the winning expectation put on the agencies in the delivery of the European policies as a common fisheries policy. Our new strategy was the highlight for me in the previous meeting, and I'm very much looking forward to working with all colleagues on this. I would like to hear from guest speakers working on administration or strategic portfolios in the Commission. And I would also like to touch upon gender mainstreaming in one of our upcoming meetings. I was very pleased to hear EU institutions uh, recognizing uh, agencies as uh, vital implementing arms for uh, delivering uh, the EU policy uh, priorities. And in the future, I believe that uh, meetings of the network should concentrate on further explore and discuss potential for uh, collaboration at more operational level, and so to further enforce this interagency cooperation. The European institutions are working in their individual silos. The agencies network, on the other hand, appears to be much closer to the European citizen. The dialogue can therefore help the institutions to better understand what Europe needs. For the follow-up, I believe we should focus on topics of common interest. And here I'm not referring to the eternal fight for budget and resources. I am thinking of major policy objectives such as the European Green Deal. The COVID-19 pandemic has tested the resilience of the internal EU dialogue. It has shown even more the importance of mechanisms such as the EU agencies network as a key forum for communication and coordination. During the pandemic, Europol quickly adapted to the new working situation and continued to provide expertise to member states' competent authorities and EU institutions. The pandemic has made us look at how our agencies can be more future-proof and resilient. The increasing demands placed on Europol in the fight against serious and organized crime, terrorism, cybercrime and child sexual abuse required it. This is why the topic EU Agencies Network in 2030, green, digital and resilient is more timely than ever. Cooperation and flexibility is in the DNA of the EU agencies. During the COVID crisis, we continued to demonstrate the benefits we provide to policymakers and EU citizens. 
We must now modernize our working methods, which ultimately should be reflected in the staff regulations. We face all the same tasks to build a more green, a more digital and a more resilient Europe. And for that, collaboration is the game changer. I'm so happy that this happens now much more. We can learn a lot from the UNOPS example, which was excellent. Let's build a shared service competence center within the EU1 structure. Unfortunately, I could not be present at the last meeting of the EU Agency Network since I was nominated executive director of the GSA only in the middle of October. Nevertheless, I'm looking forward to be with you in the next meetings to exchange on common topics of interest for all the agencies. And I am looking forward to building a successful partnership with all my executive director colleagues. Located throughout Europe, the agencies play a vital role in implementing European policy for the benefit of citizens. This is why they need to be able to communicate in citizens' languages. It is essential they put in place effective practices for disseminating information in multiple languages. For me, the future lies in harmonizing approaches and creating synergies for multilingual communications. I would be pleased to see future discussions on concrete strategies to measure citizens' trust in agencies. Citizens should always be foremost in our work and ensuring their trust is therefore crucial. We should also understand that the expectations of Europeans are and how we can better meet this in our daily activities.